Give it up for me. It is once again a joy and an honor to be standing before you this afternoon. And uh, thank you for the heart of worship. It's all about the Lord. And this afternoon I want you to join with me as we expect the Word of God to, to unlock the things that are hidden. Things that are foreign because the Word of God is light. From the youth to the young couples, brothers and sisters in the Lord, elders and pastors. By the way, thank you so much, Holbrook Church. We appreciate your welcoming us here. God bless you. Give God glory to the Lord for this great people. Amen. Also from Holbrook, as a dedicated young people and pastors and brothers and sisters, give them a hand from Holbrook. Some of the group of young people and teenagers are with me. They are joining with me in the first missionary journey and they are so excited. Yeah. And all of this group from Sydney, give them a hand. Yeah. Thank you. Father, what a joy. What an honor that we can come together in this place. Amen. It was not in Lord a coincidence. For the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Thank you for this time. I pray that the Holy Spirit of the living God will once again minister to our hungry hearts. Yes. And you know exactly the longing, the yearning, the desire, Lord, of each one's heart this afternoon. Since you are the giver and, and you have given us the word mentionedly by bread alone, and blessed are those who do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. As we open, open our vessel this afternoon, I pray that you will fill it to the overflow. That our minds will be sanctified, our hearts will be. Lord, enjoy the word that will sanctify us and set us apart to become a living organism that transmits life and holiness and righteousness in the land that is in need of Jesus Christ today. Father, sanctify our hearts. And Lord, I pray for the attentivity of each one's ear as we will open our hearts to you. You will be magnified, you will be exalted, you will be glorified alone, O oh God. And so have thy own way, reward us as we desire to know you more and more because you are worthy. We'll give you all the praise, the honor, the glory forever. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, this afternoon, I would like to give to you one of the highlights of one of the revealed Word of God in the book of Paul in chapter 8. So I want you to turn with me in the book of Romans. There's an echo, it's my family name, so I'm used to that. Okay, so, one more second, I'm looking for my notes here. Okay. I want you to turn with me in the book of Romans chapter 8, and please bring out your Bible, take notes, and underline things, and because this is life that you'll be receiving this very moment in time. And chapter 8, beginning from, but... Chapter 8, beginning from verse 1 to 17, but I want you to glimpse just a little portion of the last few verses of chapter 7 so I can connect and be able to see the substance that I would like to convey to you this afternoon in the clarity of the revealed will of God. So I want you to look to, with me in chapter 7, the last few verses, and then we will just enjoy chapter 8 of uh, the chapter 8 of the book of Romans. So, okay, beginning from verse 21 of chapter 7, then we'll go ahead to chapter 8 and then from there up to the exposition. So, I find this law in verse 21, chapter 7, law at work. When I want to do good, 
evil is right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law, but I see another law at work in the members of my body, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within my members. I want you to say that through kind of contrast, there's a law where you want to serve the Lord and there's a law of the human nature in the inside of members, in your innermost being, in your heart, that is fighting each other. And then he goes on to say there is a continuous fighting war, which is the longest war even today. And so here is the confession of Paul. He experienced chapter 7, a life of defeat in chapter 7. Look at the confession of this man. What a wretched man I am. In the word wretched man, I am hopeless. If this is the case, I keep striving and I keep doing my strength. I'm aiming for something like I made it one time and then the second time, the third time, I'm once again at the very bottom. There is an ongoing kind of battle. And he said, how wretched person that I, oh wretched man that I am. And there he goes to say, goes on to say, main points this afternoon to ponder and your important words from the Lord. I want you to see the word therefore, very important word. So I want to stick your eyes to the word of God, be able to digest, dissect, understand, penetrate, it become amalgamated to your innermost being, it become a lifestyle once it is accepted in the mind and heart and the innermost being by the Holy Spirit, you can live a victorious life. Amen. Therefore, look at the word therefore in conjunction to chapter 7, there is now no condemnation. I want you to underline the word condemnation. No condemnation. In absolute uh, word from the Lord, there is no more condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do in that it was weakened by the sinful nature, God did by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful man to be a sin offering. And so he condemns sin in, sin in a sinful man, in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us, who do not live according to the sinful nature. And so we can see now, a Christian, they are no longer servant to sin, they are no longer uh, sub, sub, so, you know, submit, submitted to sin, but what's happening, they are living now according to the law of the Spirit. Those who live according to the sinful nature have their mindset on what that nature desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their mindset on what the Spirit desires. So we can see now the contrast. And those who set their minds on God, that is living by the Holy Spirit, and those who set their minds on the things of the earth. And so there we can see that their servant, their mind, becomes sent. These are sinful kind of mind who submit to the law of the death flush. So I want you now to follow me closely and the topic I would like to respond to you this afternoon is a beautiful topic. Life like to the fullest. The word fullest, there is no more lack, no shortage whatsoever. It is an overwhelming power to continue to live a life of victory in this world of sin. Now, the Apostle Paul, the Epistle of Paul to the Romans, Church and the Believer has been called the Cathedral of the Christian Faith. And I want you to say that in chapter 8, of all the chapters of the book, chapter 8 may be addressed as the most sacred place of praise and prayer of the altar. Now in chapter 8 you can see victory, here you can see victory of the believers revealed and the life to the fullest is granted. There's a story of an Indian who said, an Indian said, a black dog, a black dog lived inside of my heart. But when Christ became, when he became my savior, a big white dog came to live in his heart as well. And so there are now two dogs who are then fighting all the time. Black dog and the white dog inside of the human heart. Now after the meeting, someone asked and approached this Indian guy and inquired him, Sir, which dog wins? The white one or the black one? 
The engine was so good in responding to the question, a bona fide genuine question. It is said, quote, the one I feed the most is the one who wins. Which one you feed the most in your life? It is the black dog, which is secular and sinful, or the white dog, which is Jesus Christ Amen. in your heart. Yes. And so you have to know. After, so that's what happened. Life to the fullest is my topic today. Now, I wanted to say in verse 15 that Paul is saying, I don't understand myself. I don't understand myself at all. I come to the point of being confused. A person who was appointed by God, commissioned to be a man of God of miracle, a great apostle of God, and he said, I don't understand myself. I come to the point of, just like, it is a struggle. It's a continuous struggle in my life. Because there is the option, there is an innermost desire, I want to do good. I want this, I have the desire to do what is right. And I have that in my mind, and I have that in my heart, but the problem was, I don't do it. Instead, I do the very thing I hate. In verse 18, it is said, I am rotten. It is just good for nothing. Through and through, so far as my old sinful nature is concerned, I am rotten. No matter which way I turn, I can make myself do right. Because he was a slave for many, many years under the bondage and dominion of sin. So he said, I want to do, and which way I turn, no matter where I turn, I can make myself do right. I want to, but I can't. Verse 24, the Bible says, Oh, what a miserable person I am. Look at the man of God. He said, I was miserable. Who will free me? Who can deliver me? Who is the one who can give me an option and be able to have the flag of victory? The life no longer under the dominion of sin, but in the power of righteous living, somebody must rescue me. And that's why chapter 7, the last verse, is the big sound like a trumpet. A trumpet that will sound victory, concrete and alive. I thank my God through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's the victory. When you have Jesus Christ in your heart, I tell you, you will never be the same again. And so chapter 8, as you can see, yes, we have, there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. I want you to say the word in chapter 8, verse 1, the start, there is no condemnation in verse 1. And the last verse in chapter 9 ends with no separation. No condemnation, no separation in between means security. Amen. Wow! Security! And I want you to understand, because I have to unveil something in between this beginning and the end, security, something, there is more in between, and the Christian is living in a roller coaster experience because something is happening. Instead of following the master, they're following their own master, which is their own prerogatives in their own way. So follow me closely. King James says, there is therefore now no condemnation to those in, who are in Christ Jesus. The word therefore is a, conjun a conjunction. Therefore is a connecting link. Something that connects these two chapters. The word therefore refers to the preceding chapter concerning the arguments which was unveiled to us by Paul. He was miserable, he was hopeless, and he wants to be delivered. He hates himself, he could not overcome witness of sin, but finally he come to the realization victory is certain because of Jesus Christ. And so we can, we can say that Paul was confronted in chapter 7, he was pitiful in the state of no hope, being bound and controlled by sin. And so we can say we try our best with our strength and determination for you and for me. And always we fail. And we fail. And so we know that we are rotten. Whenever we turn, we always cling to the wrong stuff. You know, that, that is our old nature. And sometimes and many times we love to hang on to that old nature in our lives. You want to do right, you focus on the right direction, but always you stumble. I want you to say, look at this now, in the practical application, you're a Christian, how come, and this now we can distinguish which Lord, you serve in which Lord I serve. How come when it comes to you, 